we should do with this? We generally cancel the meetings during OSS NA and OSS yeah. EU. I, I just think it's a lot smarter to do it. That way we're not, even for the folks that are there, like sometimes, as you all know, you're like, I'm going to make this meeting and then just things yeah. pop up and you want to see people. And, and well, it's also going to be middle of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know what the translation is, but there's the speed mentoring on Wednesday. There's the diversity lunch. Um, I think those are both Wednesday. It's and this six meeting hours. might hit those. It's six hours ahead from Central. So time. four o'clock. No. So it yeah, is. This meeting is at ten. So that meeting would be at four. Okay, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I have a conflict at the time, so I won't be there no matter what. I've got a client yeah. meeting. I vote for just canceling all the chaos meetings that week. Yeah, Woo! that sounds good to me. <laughs> Second. Yeah. We get yeah. to hang out together at ChaosCon. Mm -hmm. That'll be awesome. Agreed. Yeah. I'm sorry I'll miss it, but I'll have a week without meeting. I know. Meeting. What did you do? Um, I my son was moving my daughter into an apartment in Madison, Wisconsin, and there was like, I don't know, eight or ten stairs, and I just jumped from the top to the bottom like I did when I was <laughs> 12 and my foot hurt but i didn't go to the doctor until the next week and he's like like yeah, this is not normal and so he did an x-ray and i have four breaks but Ooh. if i wear bicycle shoes oh. it really doesn't hurt like unless i walk i can walk about three four thousand steps a day no problem and if i go over that like i can't walk the next day so Ooh. They, he doesn't, he says, because there's so many breaks, he doesn't want it to surgically, he doesn't want it to heal normally. He wants to have a surgeon, like, set the bones correctly and use, like, little fiberglass or steel or whatever things they put in there. And that way my bones will heal properly and I'll be able to walk normally. So, oh, sure. Yeah, well, uh, you know, aging gracefully sometimes involves doing very stupid things you did when you were young <laughs> and learning that you shouldn't. Uh, next on our agenda, we have two metrics that need to be finalized for project badging. We want to take a little bit of time right now to comment them, comment on them. Looks like newcomer experience and recognizing contributors. Yeah, just a little context on these. So as part of project badging, what we're asking is that um, communities comment on how they're approaching Things like um, project burnout, inclusive leadership, uh, newcomer experience, and recognizing contributors. So as part of the DEI.MD file, we're asking that projects kind of communicate what they're doing with respect to these metrics. And so as, as part of that, there are a couple metrics that need to be built out. So newcomer experience is one that is actually a bit older and had some information in there and recognizing contributors currently does not exist. We have a contributors metric, I think it might be in common, which is just kind of listing all the different types of contributions that people make. Um, but this is really about recognizing the contributors within your community. So I'm hoping we could spend just a little bit of time in this group here, uh, reading and commenting on each of these metrics. Do we want to pause the recording for a little yeah, bit and like open them? How we would just, yes, take like 10 minutes and, and, and just, you know, type and just give your thoughts. So that would be great. And then we can come back and well, I will pause. what happens though is, you know, we always pause the recording and then somebody has really good questions while they're typing. So, but I'll pause the recording anyway. All right, uh, welcome back. Um, I'll share my screen. First, I'd like to, to recognize all of you as amazing contributors. See? <laughs> <You're> doing it. <laughs> you are anyway, I, I mean that in all honesty. So um, 
turn on my video here. Oh, wait, you just using my screen anyway. So, okay. Um, was there anything, I'll start with newcomer experience. Was there anything that anybody would like to add here, you know, beyond just the edits that they had um, with respect to, to concerns or things that they would like to include or not include? With respect to newcomer experience. I had one comment myself that I don't know the answer to. So my own was around the visualizations that we have here. These are kind of, I think they're aimed at kind of observing how uh, improving the newcomer experience could be <laughs> kind of trying to understand how the newcomer experience could be observed as improving. Is that right? You know what I mean? So like we're trying to understand are people coming back and contributing a second time, a third time, and a fourth time as an indicator is that we have a pretty good experience for newcomers. So do we want to keep, keep these as, you know, here you can focus on these things with respect to newcomer experience, and here's a way that you can observe how those, how those changes are having an impact. Does that make sense? It's kind of two, two steps. One is to work to include the experience and the second is to observe the impact that that might have. So, so the question is, do we want to include think Kate, both? And, Katie, if you're yeah. talking, you're muted or can't yeah. hear you. I just unmuted. I had a question on the text that was in the picture that can't be edited. Um, it says, so it has a definition of repeat contributor. Um, is, and it says that that's auger first time contributors is what the reference to that is. Uh, is there a, is there anywhere in chaos that has a definition of what first time, or what um, repeat contributor is, or is it the same as auger's definition? I don't know that we have a metric for repeat contributors. Um, I we do not. I think, I think, I don't know if we need one either because, so if you, you're a repeat contributor, if you do it twice, right? <laughs> well, I was actually and, just having, I had a conversation with um, one of my um, colleagues or teammates at, over at Indeed and they are, um, she's putting together a blog post right now about what repeat contribution and sustained contribution is and has found like five or six different definitions of it across different open source projects and other things. So the, yeah, maybe we Some do need are a 10 metric. plus. So there, with, go ahead. Oh, I was like, she, yeah, she sent me a list of a few and she said some places are one and above and some are 10 and above, like they're all over the board. The reason that Augur chose four is because two just gets you a lot of noise, right? And, and that's not necessarily as strong of a commitment as four. And so four, heuristically with the repos we were looking at, that seemed to be a sort of a threshold over which a person seems more likely to continue. 10, that seems like uh, even better in many cases, but of course, a lot of it just depends on the size and the activity level and the repo. So maybe we should define that because four is a parameter that can be put in and that's the one we kind of chose as the default. And in that case, do we want to make that more clear that that's not a chaos metric that exists? That's mm -hmm. not a chaos definition and that that's somebody else's definition in this metric? Mm -hmm. Yeah, should I just add text to that effect in the metric or is there another suggested? Mm -hmm. This graph maybe is an example of an auger uh, graph that um, like, a graph from Augur yeah. um, that shows repeat contributors. The definition for of Augur repeat contributor is. Yeah. The other thing that we do, which GitHub doesn't do by default, is we contributions are all equal, um, at least in terms of counting them. You're only a contributor from GitHub's perspective if you make a commit that's accepted. And then you're in the this more amorphous community 
with so us. based on this conversation, it sounds like you would like to leave these visuals in as well as, so kind of this, the both. I think contextualize them, I think is what I'm hearing. Right, but the, the question that I had was, should we keep a focus on how to help people think about the newcomer experience and then how to observe the impact of those efforts? And really these graphs are about, I think, observing the impact. And based on, on Katie's comments, she would just like some more precision in those, in those graphs. And so then I take well, that in as the, yeah, in the text under the graph. Yeah. So then I take that as you would still like them there, meaning I you think, would like to see. Yeah, those. I think it's a good visual representation. Okay. It just needs context. Cool. Right on. So is a it, is a first time contributor the same thing as a new contributor? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So the so the chaos metric for first time contributor is new contributor. And then we've also defined inactive contributors. Uh, I think contributors and occasional contributors. Kevin, if you could add those, that would be great. Or like references to those. Okay. Are there any other like kind of structural comments that people have on these kind of things or on this metric. Uh, okay, so thank you, Katie. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, everybody who provided a lot of feedback. Uh, I'll work to incorporate this and share it back with everybody. I'll probably share it via Slack again. All right, yes, and please add your name if you're uh, known contributor now to this metric and you would like to be included. That'd be cool. I, I would also make one more note that between, if you're using new and first time contributors, you might want to use first time contributor across everything and not new because somebody could be a new repeat contributor. They might not have been a repeat contributor before that would make them a new one. Katie, can you drop that comment in here? Just as a comment <laughs> somewhere. Wait. Okay, let me get out of my full screen view. Okay, I just don't wanna lose that, that's all. Also, the that, that comment may mean that we need to reassess the definition of what a new contributor is, because uh, new contributor is a release metric. Okay. I'm gonna move on to recognizing contributors. <laughs> All right, so um, same question. Are there any kind of large structural parts of this that people would like to include, exclude, um, something that wasn't in the metric or that's not clear? I had included these three images. I don't know that I love that one, but just kind of three images as ways that recognizing contributors can be done. So whether it's from all contributors, from Open Collective, from GitHub. Um, yesterday, too, in the community call, um, Sophia had shared this across program, which is. Um, something that I, I need to take a little bit more look at. It doesn't look like it's, I was taking a look at, you can see the tab up there. It doesn't look like it's really in practice. It's more like a, a community that you could participate in. So I'll, I'll add that. Um, thank you, Don, for adding survey items. I like that. And then quantitatively, we don't have a lot here. Just, just is what it is. I mean, it seems a little, I don't know, when I wrote it, it felt a little uninspired. Well, maybe, maybe we should add some of the things that we just talked about in the 
visualizations. Sorry, maybe that was for the newcomers. Now I think I'm confusing the two metrics. Yeah, I'm on recognizing contributors now. What's um, the what's the difference between this one and contribution attribution, which is a evolution metric? One is a general recognition without reference to a specific artifact, and I think contribution attribution references a specific artifact. Do we need to add some language to this one that uh, I'm kind of reading recognizing contributions is kind of building on top of contribution attribution or contribution attribution is maybe a important uh, measure for recognizing contributors. Okay. Is contribution attribution a released metric? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put the link in the chat. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe we could all take a peek at it because I'm not I'm not sure where it would fit in here, but it probably needs to fit somewhere. I think it's probably more than a filter. Mm, thanks for bringing this, Kevin. Yeah, that tool that's mentioned in that with from Drupal, that's the tool I was trying to find to put in this metric as a way to recognize or aggregate those types of non-code contributions. But I don't know that I linked to the right thing. I put it as number six on the footnote, but I can check that. Seems <laughs> seems very similar to me, <laughs> at least the, the top read. All right. Um, I think the difference, though, is that we're looking at paid versus volunteer work a lot in this metric, which doesn't really, like, that's not really what we're trying to do with recognizing contributions, I don't think. I think those two things are separate. So I think we're good. Okay. But then maybe to Kevin's point to like read through this and it's either like in this metric saying like somewhere it's up related. here. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere up here saying, hey, there is this thing called contribution attribution. Um, and we're differentiated as such. And then Kevin, you had mentioned one other thing, like putting it down as a potential measure. Uh I think it, I mean it has to be part of the measure of recognizing mm -hmm. contributors, right? So in order to in order to understand how a project is recognizing contributors, we first have to measure that contribution attribution, right? Okay. So and maybe it's and so maybe recognizing contributors is just a kind of a step forward because it's looking at the different ways that that attribution is uh, provided rather than just the, the measure that the attribution is occurring. Okay. Well, thank you for that. All right. Um, I will take all these edits back. And again, I'll share them back with everybody. So thank you for everybody's thoughts and effort. And I am done. Yeah. I have nothing else to add. You're muted, Katie. We are at 1045, but um, that, that's what where we're ending on the calendar. But do, really quickly, do we need to go over, or do you want to go over the project badging statement on Matt? Kevin had added this. And Kevin, I just haven't had a chance to take a look at it, so I will. We can we can look at it another time. I just okay. I, we talked about it in the community meeting, and yeah, I, yeah. I did it right away. So if 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 everyone wants to take a peek at it out of band, that'd be great, and maybe okay. we can talk about it either in the next community meeting or in the next DEI. Okay, um, and thank you for that. And then the last thing we have on here is um, 
the interview campaign with the underrepresented groups. I see there's a couple of links. Do we have an update on that? Yeah, so um, the last time we talked, we need to get the categories that we're working on for the underrepresented groups and also get questions. So I um, drafted some of these and um, I just need your feedback on this document so far. So like the questions that are available, the link is in the minutes there. I <coughs> group into the interview guide has like how I'm going to go about um, taking on these interviews and I've grouped the questions so far into three categories. The first one to get the personal data of these persons and then the and the second follows for their open source experience and how much knowledge they have on open source and diversity and inclusion. And then the final one, which will be um, the debate on the current DEI metrics that we're working on in chaos. So I just needed the, um, the community to help me review some of these questions. If you have any other questions that we could add or any other suggestions that we could make towards this. Like, I know this is just a tip of some of the questions, but yeah, this is what I have so far. And I would really appreciate more feedback, especially on the questions. I am happy to provide feedback. Anita, do you just want the feedback in this document? Would that be easiest for you? Yes, you can add it in documents right there. Okay, yeah, I will definitely do that. Thank you. And then what about, there was this document as well? Yes, do this want... these are the categories of the underrepresented group. So I just put this so that we can know what we are working towards. And then I also outlined the metrics here because if we're reaching out to these people and we send the link to the metrics on the website, there'll be like so many met other metrics that we're working on. So I, I wrote this down here so we can just focus on this, the DEI metrics particularly. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you for that. And thank you for all the effort on this. It's really come together really, really well. Yeah, that's great. Um. Does anyone have anything else to add to the agenda or talk about in our last minute? I do not. The last thing would be just a facilitator for next week because we are still here next week. And oh yes, we are here. <laughs> like <laughs> you're I, you're on <laughs> two weeks away time right now. You're brain <laughs> camping. I, <and> then <laughs> my brain is not processing time very well i should be able to make like come and listen into this meeting on my way to the airport but that's about it. <laughs> is there anybody else who wants to facilitate next week i'm happy to do it that's not a problem thank you But that looks like it's it for this meeting. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you. Hey, everybody. Bye, everyone. Take care, all.